Hi there, Lindy Goodall here with Lindy G Embroidery. In this video, I'll show you how to change the hoop size in Embrilliance. Having a hoop reference is a great feature, and it's important to understand that the hoop you see in Embrilliance is just a visual reference, and this is the hoop right here. And actually, we should think of this more as the sewing field rather than the actual hoop. So this is the area that, the max area you, that you could sew with this particular selected hoop. So in other words, the hoop on the screen does nothing to affect the ability to save the design that's either bigger than the visible hoop, or if I save this design, it doesn't require me to use this particular hoop. It's just a visual reference. And I could even have a different format hoop. We'll see in a, a few minutes that Embrilliance has hoops for all the different machines. And even though this is a PES design, I could have a JEF hoop here if I wanted to. It doesn't make any difference. So I've opened a small design it's here on my screen. This is one of the designs from Sewing Sayings. And if I look at the bottom status bar, I can see the design size, which is 89 millimeters by 87.6 millimeters. And I can see that the hoop is 200 by 200 millimeters. Now I know that this is going to fit my four by four hoop, but maybe I wanna see how it fits in there and how it looks. So I'll click on Preferences and we're already select on hoops and the PES is chosen. And we'll just keep with that since I know there's a 100 by 100 hoop here. And let's click apply. And if I move this out of the way, we can see now that that sewing field or that hoop is around that design and I can see how it's going to fit in there and I can see that it's going to work on my tiny brother machine. Before we leave the hoops, let's look at a few other options. First, let me select a 5x7 hoop, which is a 130 by 180 millimeter hoop, and click Apply. And you can see how that looks around that particular design. Now, let's say that I wanted to have two of these designs side by side. Well, I can't really tell that with this vertical orientation, but I can rotate my hoop 90 degrees, click Apply, and then I would be able to see how that worked. I also have some options to create a new hoop, or edit a hoop, or delete a hoop. And when I want to do any of this stuff, I usually do it under DST. And you can see here I've created a ginormous hoop, 1000 by 400, and I was doing some particular layout and I wanted to make sure that it looked good all laid out that size, and then I split it up for uh, smaller hoops. This is kind of what I make most hoops for. You might make a new hoop if your machine comes out with a new hoop or a specialty hoop and Embrilliance hasn't updated it yet, so you can always add in new hoops. And they do save when you update the software, so they won't get wiped out. To edit this one, maybe I wanted to put the millimeters in there. I'll just click the hoop that I want, click Edit, and then type in MM and MM and hit OK. And now it's been renamed. To create a new hoop, I'll click the New button and there's that same dialog box, it's just empty. So you would type in the name of whatever you want to call it. You might want to call it Temp Border Hoop or Temp Tablecloth Hoop or something descriptive so that you know that it's not a, a regular standard hoop put in your sizes. Now these are going to be rectangular, they're not going to be round. So then you would just click OK, but we don't have anything in there, so we'll click Cancel. So let's apply this really huge hoop, and I'll um, unrotate it. I'll click Apply, and now our hoop is gone. So let's see what's going on there. So if you have a really large hoop, and let's zoom out where we can see this really large hoop, if you're zoomed in smaller than the hoop area, then you won't see the hoop. And another reason you might not see the hoop is that on the view menu, there's no check mark in front of draw hoop. If there's no check mark, it's not going to draw those things. So I'm, I don't have the grid turned on, for example, right now. So let me uncheck that and see, now the hoop is gone. It's actually kind of there, but you just can't see it. So let's go back and turn it on and we'll 
go back to preferences and change it. Another tip would be what you've got selected down here. So even when the hoop is not being drawn, so you still have a hoop selected and it's still showing. And I'm just going to go back to PES again since I know where that, that little hoop is. And I'll click OK. And we'll zoom up. So that's pretty much it. Remember, the hoop is a visual reference only. It won't prevent you from saving a design that's bigger and might therefore be too large for your machine. Another thing to know is that the hoop preference is not saved with the design file. In other words, if I save my love to sew design with a 100 by 100 millimeter hoop, but then I open it up at another time with a different hoop size selected, that's the hoop that will be displayed. Why? Well, because the hoop is just sort of a background image. And whatever hoop image is selected at the time is the one that gets displayed. Now, just because I have a 100 by 100 hoop here doesn't mean that this other design, which I opened when I had a 200 millimeter hoop open, it won't change. So it's still displaying whatever it was that was available when I opened the design. So let's go back. I want to say a few more things about this design. This, the hoop we've chosen here is the ideal size for sewing this design. And the reason I say that is because you want to use the smallest hoop that can accommodate your design. And it holds the fabric better. It provides more stability. You'll get less distortion during sewing. Also, I have a little bit of space around here. And that's a good thing, too. You really don't want a design that maxes out your sewing field area because then you can't do any adjustments at the machine if you need to fine tune it. And I'll tell you, getting a perfectly and precisely placed design when hooping can be difficult. So I do try to hoop between the rings whenever possible, but sometimes I've spent more time hooping than it took to sew the design. You'll get the best stitch formation and alignment when you hoop between the rings of the hoop. So I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.